Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be caught. I'm here's the thing. I'm regardless of the like what the overall markets are doing. My my niche is small cap, and it's kind of its own little realm. Like, granted, it does follow the markets and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but we've seen already, like in some of the biggest panic in the history of the markets, small cap stocks on fire. Granted, like we had other things going on, Corona that was driving small, like these small cap stocks that we were trading. And still in general, even small cap, most of those stocks were selling off during that period as well. Um, but for me, it's just a matter of like, do we have runners? If we have runners, I'll keep, I'll get more aggressive. And if we don't, I won't be. All right, guys, welcome back to Twist. Matt Monaco is currently moving, so he's gonna be out for the week, but we do have a very special guest, very similar to how I introduced Huddy. If you don't know who he is, you probably live under a rock, uh, 4,000 into well over a million now. Uh, Roland Wolf, thanks so much for coming on to the show. What's up, man? Good to see you guys. Um, yeah, I've been watching you for a while, finally on. Yeah, all right. So how, uh, how's your October going? How's, how's fall trading happening? You know, we always had a hot run beginning of 2020, and now it's kind of changing a little bit. Yeah, October has been um, slow, super slow for me and the patterns I like. Um, not too many trades, to be honest. I've been pretty much in total protection mode, just trying to, uh, and it's kind of been that way since, since midsummer, I feel like. I've been uh, protecting gains from, you know, that really manic period that went through like June, July. Um, so I've been kind of like pot shot and like when, when I see opportunities arise, uh, that are good, I've been getting in kind of taking my share and then bailing, um, especially to the long side recently, it's been, um, difficult. It's been difficult. It's been super choppy this month. That's one thing I noticed. Um, especially like you guys know, I trade mostly listed, mostly NASDAQ, uh, micro cap stocks or small cap stocks, um, and then, and there's been this big shift this year where we just have enormous amounts of volume, like algos, like all sorts of things going on that have shifted kind of the macro picture in terms of what I'm trying to do. Um, so it's been, it's been interesting, a lot of learning, uh, a lot of just sitting and watching though, for the most part, I think our biggest runner this month, uh, was way W E I, which we were talking about. And, uh, I didn't take part in it at all just like sketchy no news Chinese stuff and that was kind of the theme of the month in terms of the listed plays were like just super sketchy random Chinese runners popping um and when that's going on I'm always taking the foot off the gas pedal so it's been it's been a slow month but um but that's fine that's trading yeah 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 you talked about protection mode what um I know I know for me I know exactly what you mean you know being trading for, you know, over a few years now, it's like, so for the newbie, who doesn't know, who hasn't maybe experienced it, what does that mean, right? Versus like six months ago, it was like attack mode, it was offense. Now it's like protect, you know, kind of describe that mindset and how you kind of go about it. Yeah, it's a way, way different mindset. Um, the best way I can put it is that everything comes down, size comes down, the amount I'm going to be risking comes down, the frequency of trading uh, is less. Um, what I'm looking for in terms of gains uh, for the most part is going to be uh, put in check. So like, you know, what was a single in June is not a single right now. Um, just totally different scenarios. And I'm playing with much different size. So, so it's a, it's a much, it's a total, it's a totally different uh, zone that I get into other, in other words. Uh, the chasing, I, I make sure to be super in control of the chasing, much more in control of my entries. Um, and it's really that simple, like just reel it all in, make sure that I'm focusing on only the best setups, uh, especially because there's not too much to choose from. So I get a lot more picky um, and it's all about preserving capital and trying to grind out singles on a daily basis or weekly basis. I mean, I've gone this week, uh, what's today, Wednesday? You know, I've placed one trade this week or two trades, actually. Um, Wednesday in June, I may have placed 15 trades by, you know, Monday through Wednesday. So it's just the game. It's the ebbs and flows of the market. People, a lot of people think it's just like one pace and you're just grinding at one pace uh, steadily. And if that's the case, like, 
most of the most people I know, at least, are not going to have success just like with one mode. Um, the markets change so much, and for me, it's about a matter of keeping in touch with that, and then modifying my trading and my size and the setups I'm I'm taking and all that stuff based on that. Yeah, totally. I'm still um, and I'm assuming the the one trade you took this week was what MWBO, right? NWBO panic dip buy. Um, I took like 30k shares at a buck oh four, buck oh four, buck oh five was my average. Obviously, the risk was like 98 cents or whatever. Um, right, right. And it's kind of a funny story because I was supposed to go meet uh, Huddy for a quick round of golf. Like right as I was taking that position, I was supposed to leave for a tea time. So it was kind of funny like that. I took the position. Um, I got dressed. I got in the car and totally forgot because I was kind of in a hurry, like, oh crap, I got 30,000 30, shares on WBO at a buck. Um, so I'm actually like, so I pull out my phone and I don't recommend this. It's not, it's very uh, reckless trader behavior, but I'm sure many of us have been there. So I pull out my phone on the freeway because I get about 20 minutes to get 25 minutes away for this tea time. Um, and I'm just refreshing on, you know, my Schwab app. And it was at a buck 14, buck 15 or something like that. Uh, in my head, I was thinking maybe a buck 30, maybe a buck. Uh, no, he's max. talking about the previous day. Previous day. I'm talking, day. About the, uh, I'm talking about the big panic day. Yeah. There we go. Day. Yeah, yeah. So there, so there's the dip uh, to 98 cents or whatever, um, mm -hmm. which in my head, if we got, if that thing panicked to a buck yesterday, that's what I wanted. Uh, I know Jack went ham on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> went ham and, I don't like with that setup and the panic to a buck, I don't blame them. Uh, but for me, so I ended up with 30K shares. I'm on the way to go meet Huddy for golf. And I just took it. I took it in the buck 14, buck 15, buck 16, buck 17, uh, just 5K share lots like market orders, uh, just because I wasn't sure, you know, it's a panic and you never know, you know, you never, ever know. So, and I don't want to take a dumb like three, 4K loss if we're to panic another 20 or 30 cents for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. So that being said, I made 3K on that trade, literally from my phone on the way to the golf course. And of course, kind of kicked myself once I got to the golf course and was at a buck 25 or a buck 30. So, yeah. Um, those, these are the exact kinds of little pockets of opportunity. I missed the short completely, like the first red day short pre previously and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. these are the kind of opportunities for me that I've been just kind of seeking out and then taking that quick single when I can. Um, OTC panic dip by 101. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought the same thing too. Where where I I, I made I made money on the, the first red day short here, but then when it came to these last few days of panic, I just totally like just dropped the ball. Like didn't even think short. And and until today, until yesterday, is when I finally thought, okay, like a dip buy is coming. You know, made a little money on this dip buy, and really thought this would be the bottom, and then had to take a loss and sell the rest. Like like you said, Roland, you never know. Because I really thought, I thought I knew. And I was like, oh, yeah, like this is the bottom, like at 120, 25, whatever. We're just going to do whatever. And then we go even lower and we go to $1. I'm like, holy crap. Like we're going so much lower than I thought. But, you know, at $1 and at the $1 crack to immediately like, recover. Like, yeah, that was the dip buy. And that's why Jack went in bigger than I've ever seen him go, <laughs> go bigger before. So, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and it's so it's one of those things that, um, yeah, I've been taking small opportunities like this, and they're, they're kind of few and far between right now. Um, I missed that, that first dip that you mentioned. I was watching it because there wasn't anything else to watch. And I was pretty close to dip by myself. But for me, in my head, I'm thinking, you know, we're a couple that like we already had a first red day off the big parabolic, like three day push or whatever, a few days back. And it's just kind of further down. So I'm thinking in my head, I just wanted to see like, the only thing that would entice me on a setup like this was like a buck. Um, then, that being yeah. said, if you're playing that there. first dip, it's fun. Like I have no problems with that. It's something I, I would do at times. As long as you're cutting, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <clears throat> but that, but that well, does become the problem is that we do have a lot of people like trying to dip by these panics and stuff like that. Um, and when, when that, those levels start to breach, you end up with like dip buyers panicking out and additional downside. Right. So right. that's what I'm always concerned about. Even if it looks like it's the bottom, you never know. Yep. Yep. I agree. Yeah. And with the, the way OTC is, 
and the inefficiencies it has, it creates even more panic because they're just chasing their fills. And mm -hmm. if they have stop losses into the dip buyers, it just creates that enormous panic from, you know, a dollar fifties where it opened, got all the way down to 97. And this isn't like a low float stock. So uh, it was like $2 billion market cap when it was trading near its highs. So this is definitely a, a massive panic for the stock. And if you just look at the liquidity, obviously it's a super, super key level down there at one buck. And that's why we got that, that bounce all the way back into uh, the one thirties. Which is a sweet bounce. I mean, that's a 37, 38% bounce right there. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. And that, I mean, that brings up another point in terms of like OTC trading, which you guys obviously do a lot of and are really, really good at. Um, I've done a lot of it in the past, not so much recently, but at once upon a time I was good at it and it's still the same principles that apply. But in terms of like execution and stuff like that, a lot of people think it's easier until you get caught in a panic and you're trying to get executed and it's impossible. Yeah. Um, and that can be the difference. So for, you know, it's people see, you know, some traders using a lot of size. Well, the reason they can use that kind of size is they know that they can get in and out uh, appropriately. So for me, like, so like when we're looking at that NWBO chart and you see the first uh, pull to buck 25 and you get kind of a, a double bottom there, I personally normally like, yeah, you kind of want to see it test. I'm usually going to err to the side of caution to cut as quickly as possible. Like that's just how I like to do those things because, because of the fact that if you're not ahead of the curve and ahead of the panic, once it comes, um, the slippage is going to be, depending on your size, could be catastrophic. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I really think that uh, I've always said that you have to react like quicker on NASDAQ stocks just because they're quicker, but you need to know ahead of the time on OTCs because you, you can't wait till like that last minute to stop out. And I think that's why I'm better at OTCs than NASDAQs because uh, it gives me more time to create a plan. Usually they're not as fast and as um when they like are spiking or dropping, but I can kind of see when it's going to break a key level and get out before mm -hmm. and save myself from like a massive panic like that. Yeah. There, so, I mean, there's yeah. definitely edge just in knowing how to get executed in terms of OTCs. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's something for like newbies, especially to keep in mind when you're trying to copy someone's trading style or trade OTCs or trade anything, everything has its pitfalls. Um, and for me, that's one of the things for me personally, when I'm trading OTCs, like, I mean, execution wise, I'm always trying to like, if I, if I want, so when I got 30 K shares of NWBO, the first thing I did was throw out two K share order. And I just wanted to see what would happen, um, how, how kind of how it's going to fill and stuff like that. Because there are times where you try to buy two K, maybe even on the ask or whatever, and you're not getting filled, like trying different routes and stuff like that. And if I'm playing that game where I know it's going to be a difficult fill, most of the time, I'll, it's either going to affect my size where it comes down or I won't trade the thing at all. So, Yeah. With NWB spe NWBO specifically, I did take a lot of size on this trade, hmm. but it has been because I've been trading it for two weeks straight and I've made money on it pretty much for two weeks straight. So when it, and it was the lit. most liquidity that's up there, that's why I took that, that amount of size. And it's not just because... Um, of anything else it's just the familiar familiar air familiar air familiar <laughs> with the stock familiarity <laughs> yeah but hey but hey that this is a good thing to talk about because that's what that's probably what your biggest size ever on an otc right on any position yeah, maybe that was my that was my biggest size ever uh, okay was, so like, how did that affect but like how did that affect you because you obviously sold it too soon which is perfectly fine uh, it's yeah. a bounce and like, you know, what, what's going to happen, yeah. especially with 200 K shares and you do have to get it executed and stuff like that. Yeah. So how did it like, obviously it had to have affected you. Yeah, it definitely affected me. And I did fill like, I filled, um, a hundred, I, I front run it a little bit. I, I was dabbling just like small 10 K share lots on the way down. Right. Just to kind of see, I, I started getting some once it went below 110, and I think I got, I don't know. It was like 30 K shares or something from low ones. Mm -hmm. And then I filled 150 K below a dollar and it brought my average to like a buck. Yeah. I had 200 K and then, um, 
when it did turn, if it was whatever it was going to give me off that first second, because I saw all that volume coming in and that I knew it was going to be the most amount of volume the stocks right. ever seen in one minute. Yep. So just if Would I can you, even make like a few cents right there, just on the turn, totally. you know, that's going to pay with a hundred K shares. Yep. And that's basically what I did. Sold my first hundred K immediately at one Oh two. And I think I, I even got a little scared and I sold another 25 K at like one Oh two or something. Okay. I just had 75 K. Yep. And even if it did kind of break that $1 again, I would have gotten out for um, a little break even, depending on the fills. Uh, and then I just let it work from there, selling into the pops and then re-adding on the dip. And I only played it up to like 120, but uh, yeah. I did take a lot of size, but I wasn't like expecting a lot. I wasn't right. expecting to take this back to buck 50. Right. So crazy. Uh, no, I, I get it. Like, like you were moderating, trying to have bigger size, taking almost a scalp of sorts on the bounce, like scalping a bounce, which is kind of, it's pretty smart. Like, to be honest on these OTCs, if you're going to be, uh, especially if you're slanging size around like that. So, but that's cool, man. Yeah. NWBO. I mean, that was, you know, the only real trade this week. A uh, lot of, I mean, overall markets got pretty beaten up today, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Dow down 943 yeah. as of right now. And speaking of that, um, you know, we're going to be going into the election mm. here next month. And I just think that maybe we'll see some continued weakness going into just like the uncertainty like we usually do. So just going to be cautious on trading next month and in December until we kind of reset in 2021. You know, it's been a great year, so there's no need to ruin it, especially if the market, you know, takes out that support level into the election could get pretty bloody. Uh, but it always could rebound very quickly, like it's proven to do before. But just go in with caution. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to be caught. I'm, here's the thing. I'm regardless of the like what the overall markets are doing. My my niche is small cap and it's kind of its own little realm, like Granted, it does follow the markets and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but we've seen already, like in some of the biggest panic in the history of the markets, small cap stocks on fire. Granted, like we had other things going on, Corona that was driving small, like these small cap stocks that we were trading. And still in general, even small cap, most of those stocks were selling off during that period as well. Um, but for me, it's just a matter of like, do we have runners? If we have runners, I'll keep, I'll get more aggressive. And if we don't, I won't be. Uh, I'm not, I'm going to be from the most macro of perspectives, the overall markets, yes. Uh, I'm going to be watching them if there's like a lot of panic. Uh, my, my whole thing going into the end of the year is still to maximize gains on a daily basis. But if the market's not there for me, the market's not there for me. So that's pretty much, it's going to be the same process as always. Do we have runners? How's, how's the state of small cap? And if no, then I'll keep sitting on my hands and kind of cherry picking plays like NABB um, or I'm sorry, was it NWBO? NWBO. I'll keep cherry picking stuff like that. Um, but I agree, you know, it's a, there's a lot of pensive stuff. I don't try to guess overall markets. I let you know, computers and smarter people and people with billions of dollars, you know, try to guess that game and they're wrong still. So who cares? Um, you know, I don't try to play that guessing game. I just react. And, and that's still where I'm at right now, you know, but yes, right now, my goal is don't do anything stupid until the end of the year. It's been a great, <laughs> great year. Yeah. I just like to go in with negative expectations just so I, I do better just taking what the market gives me like that. When I expect anything, like when I expect to make a lot of money, it, you know, I'll screw myself. That's why I always just go in neg negative and cynical that there's going to be nothing. And then when there's something right there, I just take it. And that's yeah. it. Yep. Oh, I, had, what else? Like I had Yuma overnight last night, which sucked. Uh, Not too many shares, but Yuma um, BTC was up in like almost 14K again. Oh, yeah. And, and then, and, th and this, I've played it so many times, you know, the Bitcoin stocks, they haven't really been hot for since like 2018 or whatever, uh, since yeah. the 20K run for Bitcoin. But I gave it a shot on the overnight thinking uh, Bitcoin may have broken some key levels or something like that overnight. Instead, it just got beaten up with the overall markets too. Futures were down overnight and stuff like that. Uh, so I cut it this morning for, you know, I took like a 15 cent, 20 cent loss, but no big deal. Um, on Mara? 
Mara, right? Not you. Yeah. Yeah. Been, they were super Mara. dilutive. Like they had a run to, to the fives a couple months ago and sold off a bunch of shares. Yeah. But um yeah, it's been a, it's been a difficult market, but the, but it is what it is. Uh, that gets me to one more other point I wanted to talk about, which was, um, yeah, like algorithmic trading and stuff like that in terms of listed NASDAQ plays. Um, the action's been choppy and it's been uh, really unpredictable. You know, we've seen a lot of high day breaks uh, get sold into and then, you know, low day breaks end up bouncing um, a lot more unpredictable. So what I've been doing is doing my best to be super disciplined with entries. Um, I'm especially not chasing like high of day breaks, uh, breakouts even, uh, I'm not, haven't really been playing those. Uh, end of day, high of day breaks, stuff like that. I've been trying my best to avoid um, just because I, you know, I'm trying to follow the patterns and what the patterns are telling me. Uh, and whatever it has been in control and driving, you know, the hundreds of, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of shares trading on some of these NASDAQs in a single day uh, and controlling these stocks in a way I haven't seen in small cap ever. Uh, it's kind of new territory. So, you know, I'm navigating through that. Uh, and it's and it's just a really, really, it's been a really interesting year. Well, I remember when you briefly mentioned in the beginning of the episode about WEI and it's like, you know, huge huge runner from from one to five but it's like you didn't play it you know and it's and so it's like for for people you know newer traders who are listening it's like you know how do you deal with that FOMO of watching this thing go and it's like you know are you purposely not going for what you just mentioned of you know you don't want to chase the market environment you know all these different factors that are unique to every single stock it's like how do you kind of cultivate that through what experience over the years or you know how do you deal with that FOMO of, of picking which ones are worth it for you and, and, and you know stuff like that you know, for me, dealing with FOMO is pretty easy. I miss these like nine times out of 10, maybe 99 times out of 100 on something like Way, where it's a random Chinese stock that goes from sub one to actually, I was going to say earlier, to over $10 is where it <laughs> went to after hours. Um, first of all, the halt that you see and the drop, that is one of the main reasons, okay? Anytime, any stock, uh, particularly like sketchy Chinese stocks uh, are running, you know, 100, 200, 500, 600, a thousand percent in a day on no news. Um, it's not a good, I mean, like, yeah, I could squeeze to like a hundred the next day, who, who knows what it could do. But most of the time it's gonna be something more like this, where in this case, the company comes out, uh, they halt the stock and say, hey, uh, here's the news that, it could, and it, they did a, uh, pending news halt. Uh, and the news was, was that there's no news. So we don't know why we're up. That's the news. And, then it, that's, and that is, I have never seen that uh, not be a death blow. It's always a death blow. When a company comes out and says, we don't know why you're up. You guys are a bunch of idiots. Whoever's yeah. buying this right now, we don't know why you're doing it. That's like literally what the PR is. Uh, so that's what happens. That's one of the reasons. Um, and the other reason is just like the lack of predictability. You know, I mean, yeah, you can find patterns in anything and go back and retrospect. Uh, but also in retrospect, if you're buying that up at four bucks or whatever, you're also buying it up 400. Per you're buying a sketchy ass Chinese stock up 400 percent on the day. And yeah, OK, it, it did what it did. And I understand that. And sometimes in a super hot market um, or maybe if if it, uh, if there was, you know, something that would have actually had me interest in buying something that's up 400 percent. Uh, maybe once in a while, uh, but as a as a matter of sound ha habit, like forming sound habits, it's a great habit to not buy a stock that's up 200, 300, 400 percent in the day. Period. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Similar, yeah. about, like so you talking about like how taking this long and why you didn't, you know, makes me think of of SS or SRRK because <laughs> so like. Technically, yes, like this chart is here for a short sell. Like I, I love that we're up from 14 to like 44 after, in after hours at one point, but like this company's like pretty legitimate last time I looked, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe the runs over done, but there's, there's conflicting indicators, right? And so for me, I don't know 
how I want to personally handle it. I mean, maybe Jack, if you have an input, you can go for it, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant. So it's like the same reason why, you know, Roland didn't take WEI might be the same, you know, opposing reasons on the short side of like why I don't feel comfortable shorting SS or SRRK. Um, so like all these indicators you look for and you account for, and it's like, you put it all together and, you know, you should with experience, you know, figure out, you know, the safe trades and the, and the aggressive trades you want to take over time as you develop your, your strategy. Yeah. Just doesn't add up with both of them. W E I Chinese ticker up a thousand percent. No news, not a very hot market either. S R R K it's up from like 15 bucks to 44 more legitimate, legitimate of a company. Uh, no real like daily chart history to base anything off of. Most likely that's very good news. Look at the volume that it's gotten over the last couple of days. It's just something scary to short because it can keep going and, you know, dips can keep absorbing on that. Which it's and been doing. Yeah. I mean, look at the chart. It's just literally higher lows. So, I mean, really higher lows. So, I mean, yeah, it could crack and you miss it tomorrow, but I mean, what did you really miss? I mean, uh, to me, right. like, is that your pattern? If that's your pattern, right. then by all means. And it, and to me, like it, when I'm short selling, I love this. And I just, I just try to be as patient as possible and let them like run their course um, for the most part. And then if it, you know, if it's, uh, if it just dies without me, then it dies without me. It's the same kind of principle as something like Wade, where I just let it go and I let the idiots go play. It's not just idiots, it's also shorts being squeezed to death after hours, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's that's blow up account bill right there. So, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's funny, you know, someone blew up their account there at eight bucks, uh, probably 30 seconds before it halted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yep. you know, they're just like, oh, I just got to cut it just in case it goes up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad it's messed up but it's just like well, yeah yeah it's unfortunate i mean if you it think happens. about that, a thousand shares at three bucks you know and then it's at 10 and 11 you're down seven eight k on a small account that really could be death like if you have an account below pdt or even like right at pdt that's a huge chunk of your account right there oh yeah so, it's just really, it's really simple for me when I'm playing, I like, I'm playing in small cap and I'm primarily longing, especially recently, uh, which, you know, it's kind of, uh, I'd like to be short selling more, but I've been teaching more long strategies and stuff like that. So it's been, um, so I know where I, I know what I'm dealing with, what the market is. A lot of people don't, and they're just like trading and they get hyped up on news and stuff like that. I know what my market is and I know not to be too invested in anything. I'm always, I, I try to kind of look at everything like a short seller would. In fact, I do. I try to look at both sides of the coin. Um, and that helps so much, you know, that helps so much for, to, to ease the FOMO, you know. Um, I know that over time, by taking, being really disciplined with setups, by not buying stocks that are up 400% on the day, uh, by not buying random Chinese sketchy stocks with no catalyst. Uh, by not randomly buying high a day breaks impulsively, uh, by not chasing breakouts and by cutting losses quickly and having this set of habits that over the long term, that's what's going to keep me safe and profitable, as opposed to nailing the one way a month um, or, you know, in ways to probably the last couple months where we had a run like this. Um, I've ne I have not made my career off the ways, you know, I've made my career off like the NWBOs this week. Uh, over and over and over again. And then by putting myself in the correct positions, there are times where a chart like Way would have fit my, uh, my parameters. Maybe it wasn't a sketchy Chinese stock and it had a great catalyst in a hot market. And I'm in and I still get great entries. Um, and that's, that's just from continuously putting myself in the right place at the right time. Uh, it's not by just catching the random unicorn every once in a while. Yep, totally. So many people make that mistake. Of wanting that unicorn versus just consistent gains every single day, every single week, every single month, for sure. So, any last? Uh, so, I'm stop share my screen here. Any last things you want to get out? Talk about them? Anything else? Uh, we close no. it out. No, just uh, just my plans. Rest of the year are to pretty much uh, keep trading like this. You know, unless the markets change and tell me something different. Um, I'm going to be in protection mode, hundred percent, taking those singles, uh, kind of pot shotting when I see good opportunities. Um, another thing I 
do, I'm going to hopefully be starting to do some boot camps again here, some live virtual boot camps, um, and got some other things in the works. Uh, so it should be a busy end of the year. And, uh, and yeah, how about you guys? Yeah, same, same for me. You know, I, I, again, with the, with the election trading and then into holiday trading, I think that will typically maybe speed up late December and then start off the 2021, which is usually, I mean, for my personal trading, usually January kicks off like the next big year, the next big run of a business. So yeah, keeping it, staying conservative, keeping the gains until, until we start to, you know, really ramp up again for cool. me. Yeah. Yeah. For you, me, Jack, when are you passing a mill, brother? <laughs> I don't know. Definitely. I think by the end of the year, I'm just uh, a couple of good days, man. Just a couple of good trades away. So for me, it's just about protecting that and making sure that I'm refocused and reset for next year. I don't really care about trying to, you know, keep pushing it this year. Um, I think I've hit a lot of peaks this year. So for me, it's just about just completely resetting and being ready to go for next year uh, with new goals, new opportunities. But this year, it's just really about just protecting and being safe. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, it's been awesome to see both of you. Uh, and like Monica as well, just like really kill it this year and kind of come into your own and all the work, especially that's what that's what is so cool. It's like I've known uh, Jack a little bit more personally over the years, but uh, same with Kyle. Um, it's seeing like seeing you guys in grind mode, like prior to having such success this year uh, and kind of going into last year as well. But but uh, that's what's so cool is that is the common thread that I've seen um, amongst all the traders that end up getting to do this successfully uh, is that, you know, and th that's the one thing people don't see. They just see all the, you know, success and whatever. That's not, uh, they don't see what went on behind that, which is like bleeding eyes from staring at screens so long, uh, mush brains, you know, uh, diminished health, uh all lost loss of weight loss of family relationships loss of friends all of the things and sacrifices that go into getting this at least shortening the learning curve you know what i mean so it's awesome uh, i've been super happy for you guys um and the podcast is great too so yeah, thank you a lot you really sum that up like beautiful <laughs> awesome guys well thanks for having me on yeah no problem until next time guys We'll catch you. Absolutely. Soon. Peace out, guys. Check out our episodes. Thanks. <laughs>